Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another Magic Arena Explorer video. So today we're playing a little bit of Salt Eye Dredge. Obviously this isn't actual dredge, no cards in this deck have dredge on them, which, you know, we could all be grateful for because nobody needs that in their lives. But this is uh, the closest you get to a dredge in this format, and essentially that you're just kind of recurring creatures from the graveyard, putting them into play, doing all of the good things that uh, that, that kind of strategy does. Um, so in a very kind of similar way to the dredge decks that we've played before, you have cards like Prized Amalgam, Narc Amoeba, essentially things that uh, you want to put in the graveyard, and then when you fulfill a certain criteria, then they do come back. Um, so that is uh, in the case of Prized Amalgam just having another creature enter from your graveyard, which is obviously uh, quite easy to do in this. Silver Smoke Ghoul is gaining three life. Narcomoeba is just milling it from the top of your library. Um, and yeah, that is essentially the idea behind the deck. So we do have a couple of new cards. So we are trying Insidious Roots again. So we did try this uh, um, card before in a sort of cat oven style combo, and that didn't really kind of go anywhere. So we're going to try it in this kind of build instead. So this is black, red, uh, black, green rather for an enchantment that says creature tokens you control have tap add one mana of any color. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, create a zero one green plant creature token, then put a plus one plus one counter on each plant you control. So this very much just kind of snowballs out of control very quickly. Um, if you're kind of going off, then then you know it's just endless plants and eventually you just take out the opponent that way. Um, and we're also running Snarling Gorehound. This is a, just a kind of innocuous common from Murders at Karloff Manor, but it's a 1-1 one, one menace for one. And whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you surveil one. Obviously we have a lot of those in the form of Stitcher Suppliers, Narc Amoebas, um, Haunted Dead, that kind of thing. So we just uh, we get that kind of additional benefit of just getting to put small cards into the graveyard. And obviously when our Insidious Roots trigger, that does a similar thing as well. So that's pretty neat. And then we have our kind of mill enablers, or li uh, library into graveyard enablers rather. So we've got four copies of Otherworldly Gaze, um, which lets us surveil three, um, but also flash it back and cast it again. Stitcher Supplier, which when it enters the battlefield or dies, we mill three cards. And um, founding the third path, which obviously allows us to uh, to not only cast spells from, from our hand, but also mill cards and then cast them again from the graveyard. Grizzly Salvage, looking at the top five, putting a creature or land from among them into our hand. Um, and then uh, we have some other creatures as well, so two Scrap Heap Scrounger, so this is a good recurring threat that uh, will often just come back from the graveyard time after time. If we uh, exile another creature card from our graveyard, so things like Stitcher Supplier or Gorehound, which aren't going to come back. Um, and then obviously we have our three drops with Silver, so Silver Smote Ghoul and Prized Amalgam. And then a couple of four drops as well, so Haunted Dead, um, which uh, is pretty nifty in the way it uh, returns from the graveyard in that we get to discard more cards into the graveyard. Um, and then we get the 1-1 one, one White Spirit token as well. And then obviously Creeping Chill, um, which we do want to be uh, just sticking into our graveyard from our library, very quickly kind of uh, drains the opponent out of the game. Um, you know, you cast a couple, two or three of these, and get in with some of your creatures, and, and kind of the game very quickly wraps up. Um, so this deck does tend to kind of snowball and, and win quite quickly. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind that. Um, then in terms of our mana base, we are running a pretty small number of lands. I think it's only about 18 or 19, just because you are looking at so many cards from your library that you will kind of just find the, the, the few lands that you need to make this deck work. So we're running a few surveil lands, two under city sewers and an underground mortuary, just to give us that uh, additional surveil value and put things into the graveyard. A couple of mana confluences, just to make sure we hit the... Uh, the three colours that we need, um, and then some dual lands, a couple of basic lands, and some utility lands as well. Takanuma obviously is good in a in a in a deck like this, allowing us to mill cards, and Besaju is always is always good value. So that's the main deck. Then in the sideboard we have Negate. Um, so essentially, kind of, you know, we all know that a deck like this is incredibly vulnerable to graveyard hate, it just ceases to function. So if we can negate something like a rest in peace or a ley line, then that's pretty good, pretty good. And similarly with a bloom command is good at taking down some of the most popular graveyard hate in the format with that second ability of destroying a non-creature non-land permanent with val mana value two or less, you know, it can take out rest in peace or unlicensed hearse. So that's pretty good. Um, Knight of Dusk's Shadow, this is increasingly becoming quite an important sideboard card in shutting down life gain. 
Um, Angels is quite popular in the format at the moment, so that's worth keeping in mind. Whale of the Forgotten, so we did play this in another deck uh, not long ago. A very good card if you have Descend 8, um, so it allows you to take, choose all of the modes from return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand, make the opponent discard, and then pick a card from among the top three and put them into your, uh, in, in, into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Damping Sphere, obviously there to shut down Lotus Fields and Nykthos's Mystical Dispute, just to add some additional counter spells. Ashiok, so this is not only good at kind of shutting down opponents trying to search their library, um, but also we could use it to mill ourselves as well as uh, hitting their graveyard. Um, and then one copy of Unmoored Ego as well, just to take out... Uh, essentially cards which are particularly problematic for this deck so if the opponent is running full rest in peace then let's try and take it out with an unmoored ego that kind of thing so yeah that is the deck dredgeless dredge uh, running a couple of new cards so let's see how insidious roots performs in this kind of build after we didn't really get very far with it last time uh, hopefully this will perform better so thank you very much for watching hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already always appreciate the support and let's go on to the ladder Okay, this is not to keep the hand. This isn't really, but I think we don't have a choice. <laughs> it's really not what you want to see in your life, is two creeping chills in your opening hand. So the opponent's playing Karuga, so this will be some kind of Fires of Invention deck. See if they ley line binding my Insidious Roots. They do not, okay. That gives us an opening at least. Not that we can cast any of the cards in our hand at the moment. Bin, bin, hand. Okay, we're off to a strong start now. So this will bring back our prized amalgam, our roots will trigger again. Yep, you kind of want to get rid of that. <laughs> uh, interesting that they chose our amalgam rather than our roots. Yep. Hmm, temporary lockdown's a good one. Okay. So let's blow it up with the trigger on the stack so they don't go anywhere. Now let's uh, otherworldly gaze. Um, yeah, these can all go in the bin, I think. Although, do we keep Takanuma? No, I mean, they're all going in the bin anyway, so... Stitcher Supplier... Now let's bring back Haunted Dead... Although, actually, no, let's just do that... at the end of their turn. See what they do first. Wow, that's pretty cheeky, isn't it? So it's a Cavalier-based uh, deck, that's fine. Okay. Oh, can I only do this at... Why did that... Hmm, okay.
That second temporary lockdown was super annoying. I think we'd have been well positioned otherwise. Yep, let's scoop this one up. Uh, what are we putting in here? I think... Let's pop in the gate. Mystical Dispute, Unmoored Ego. Uh, what are we taking out? Let's just take out... Some of our smaller stuff that's vulnerable to temporary lockdown. I think that'll do. Huh. I mean, I'm kind of stuck with it as much as I don't like it, because these are keepable hands, but... Can we have fewer creeping chills, please? <laughs> Discard both of these. Play ourselves a grizzly. Uh, well, no, let's just wait on that, actually. Hold up salvage. Interesting, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll take an overgrown tomb here. No, oh, okay. Good, good. So, am I doing anything differently on the... Uh, maybe I quite like Whale of the Forgotten here, actually. Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. Um, take out founding of the third path, just because if we do hit descend, then we can do quite a lot of stuff. And I do like doing stuff. There we all. Yeah, this is a decent enough opening hand. Oh, well, that's sad, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the vagaries of milling cards. Let's play Insidious Roots. Keep that one, I think. We're about to get hit with fires of invention here. Yep, they never don't have it, do they? Yeah, that's interesting. Because that doesn't do anything straight away. So, let's play Takanuma. Attack. Play a silver moat ghoul. Just hold up our otherworldly gaze. Oh, 
Ah, interesting. Their hand's not very good. Uh, well, I may as well just keep these creeping chills and use them. Because nothing else we're doing here is actually particularly good, so let's just attack. Play creeping chill. So they're going to desperately be land hunting here. No land? For once? No, of course not. Uh, that's pretty rough. Don't know why they didn't play those in a different order, but, you know. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get through this now. Um... It's like a creeping chill, but that only gets them to six. Oh well. Let's give them the option of making a mistake here. Nah, uh, they didn't. <laughs> So, I suspect it's curtains for us here. Not being able to trigger Insidious Roots at all was a problem here. Yep. Ah, disappointing. Never mind. No land. Too much land, but a keepable hand. So let's pop back mana confluence. The opponent's on a Gigantha deck. <clears throat> Looks like they're mulliganing to five here. And we got some neat founding of the third path synergy potentially, so stick that in the bin. A copper line gorge. Okay, so this could be like a vehicle stack or something. So let's play founding. Chapter one. They are grizzly salvage and an undercity sewers. Okay, this has started reasonably well. Yeah, that's quite annoying. So let's play Stitcher's Supplier. Huh. I want something I can actually bring back from the graveyard. Yeah, that doesn't do it either, so let's just keep the Grizzly Salvage on top. Yeah, we might have been just a little too slow in this game. Unfortunate, because our hand was actually... We got off to a reasonable start, but we just haven't been able to bring back anything from the graveyard. So let's recur a Grizzly Salvage. Okay, that will do, so let's bring back one of our ghouls. Uh, 
pop off Haunted Dead into play, discarding Sewers and Narcomeva. Yep, yep, you carry on. You do your thing. <laughs> That's fine. Hmm, that's interesting. Alright, let's stick our supplier in front of their chariot and do nothing else, I think. Da, da, da. Grizzly salvage. Looking for creeping chills, really. No, that won't do it, so let's just play Stitcher's Supplier. Have another one. Okay, that's a good start. Otherworldly gaze. Arc amoeba. Let's just get rid of all of these. So, they have not many blocking options, so let's just send in everything. Then I think we have enough defense that we'll be able to survive. Although it's going to be close. I think if they end up tapping their creatures for chariots, I think that'll probably work out quite well for us. Yep. So, let's see what they put. So they'll probably pump the Storm Seeker itself. Yeah, no, I didn't think they quite had the numbers there. Okay, that was not bad. Not bad. Um, let's pop in with a Bloom Command for their Smuggler's Copters. And Negate, I think, is a pretty good answer to things like Chariot. Uh, I don't like Scrap Heap Scrounger here. Uh, let's just trim a couple of Gore Hounds as well. They can't really tangle with anything that the opponent's doing. So they will probably be running unlicensed Terse as Graveyard Hate, I would imagine. Okay. Let's see how quickly we can uh, get going on this. It's going to be a little on the dicey side, I think, just with... Okay, that's not the quickest start, so... Uh, actually, I do quite... As much as I don't like taking two life here, I think having Besage you in hand is probably quite a good thing. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, let's play Stitcher's Supplier. Blow up their chariot. Then we've potentially got a double Grizzly Salvage turn next turn, which is pretty spicy. Ooh. Ooh. You public menace. Yeah, that's decent, so let's drain them. Uh, we're, we're not going to use Takanuma here, I don't think. It's too uh, mana intensive. Um, let's have the Snarling Gore Hound. Now we'll play Haunted Dead, I think, discarding these two cards. It's not looking ideal, I think we may just be a little on the slow side here. Let's block the 6-5. Gonna need quite a bit of luck here, I think, so let's Grizzly Salvage. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. Okay, that's pretty good. That'll keep us alive for another turn. Send in the creatures. Uh, it's going to be another close one. Ooh, just land is brutal for them there and pretty spicy for us, so. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll take the double block here. Ah, that makes sense on some level, I think. Okay, so let's start with Otherworldly Gaze. Yep, yep, yep. All in the bin. Cast it again. And one more time for luck. So let's just attack them down to four here. Bring back both our prized amalgams. That flips their Reckless Stormseeker again. Ooh, this is spicy. Okay, that's not bad.
So how many creeping chills have we played? Three, so we still do have another one. So I think we'll just try and hunt for that at this point. Yep, okay, that'll do it. Ah, very good. Okay, I think they were a little hesitant there. I think if they'd been more aggressive, I think they might have gone away with it. But yeah, they held back and I think it cost them. Okay, one more time. It's not bad. Ugh. Jesus. <laughs> Proper terrifying when the ring does that. <laughs> Okay, let's play our Gore Hound. Let's hold just chill for a second. They may have Bone Crusher Giant, looks like it. Oh no, Bitter Triumph. Oh, that's an aggressive use of Bitter Triumph. Well, this is going well. The fun we have. Yeah. Ugh. Why? Why? Why are you here? Everyone expects the second fable. Well, that's that's all so bad. Yeah, the, you're you're at the mercy of the order you draw cards in this deck, and the order we have drawn the cards is has been not good, not good at all. Keep expecting the other shoe to drop. Where's, where's Shieldred? Surely. Mm -hmm. Ah, so that, so this is vampires. Okay, I was wondering for a moment there. No, fine. You can go in the bin. Um, well, we're not getting anywhere just playing defensively, so. Now let's bring back our prized amalgam. This, they've not had the best um, set of opening. I mean, two fables is obviously always an absolute clown car, but. Yep. Let's try getting Sorin off the board here. Right, let's draw a graveyard enabler, please. Or another land. Yes, no, that's fine too. Uh, 
Hopefully they'll block my ghoul and then I can just sack it. Eight lands in my 19 land deck. <laughs> it's tragic. Thank you. No, no, no. Now we might be starting to get somewhere. Unfortunately, they now have this fable loop going on, which is not good news. But let's just keep ourselves busy. So two, one prized amalgam, one ghoul. God, Insidious Roots has done nothing this 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 video. <laughs> Ugh. Maybe. We just have to accept the card's not very good in this format. I know. It's very sad. We deserve better. Um, another Sorin is not the worst. Um, let's just stick this under the Muta Vault. Da -da -da. Right, I think we are going to have to... Send our creatures at... Uh... Old Sorin Majiga. That's fine. Yep, yeah, that's what they're going to spend their turn doing. That is a okay with me. Now we'll play Creeping Chill. Scrap Heat Scrounger. Now we've got a decent number of creatures coming back now. But I still think this... Uh, combo is probably going to do for us. They can't not draw Vein Ripper forever. We'll give it one more draw step, I think. They miss lethal, though. Yeah, if they'd attack with this reflection, I'd have been dead. Okay, I somehow need to do them 27 damage this turn with a mana confluence. Does begin to look a bit unlikely, doesn't it? 
Okay, let's scoop this one up. But we survived longer than I thought we were going to there. Uh, Night of Dusk Shadow is pretty good here. Um, Unmoored Ego as it's a combo deck. Negate for their Sorins. I think that's fine. So five cards to cut, which I think will be a Narcomoeba. Although Narcomoeba is an enabler for the rest of the deck, isn't it? It is. All right, let's just get rid of Gore Hound and one Haunted Dead here. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Double Leyline of the Void is a little excessive, but you do you, I suppose. And a Thought Seize. Calm it down, for God's sake. Okay, it looks like we're just going full uh, play cards as you would normally. Oh, there goes one of our insidious roots. Okay, I mean, they don't have anything, so... I suppose I'll just keep attacking. Salvage. Ah, I'll take another prized amalgam. Uh, do they have Sorin? Is the question here. I think I'm just going to have to work on the assumption that they don't. I think the long game does not favour us, so. smell a hard cast vein ripper in our future. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. I still think they're dead here though. Because if I creeping chill, they need to go to two. And then they die before the Vein Ripper triggers. Yep. Okay. Don't really have any good answers to Leyline of the Void, apart from Whale of the Forgotten, so let's put that in. Keep on more ego. Take out Founding of the Third Path. I think that'll be fine. Well, it doesn't look... yep. <laughs> doesn't look like good news, lads. <laughs> Never met an opponent who didn't have it. Hmm. 
I suppose we may as well get rid of it on the... It does just slow them down a bit, which is no bad thing. And if they can't get... if they can't play it again straight away... Yep, that was worth a go. As I say, it does... That is now their whole turn, so... Let's play Amalgam and Stitches Supplier. Yeah, I mean, there's no way we win this game, but... It's interesting, isn't it, that... This deck has the same problem as all entirely graveyard-based. Like, the deck in, like entire, almost entirely relies on the graveyard to function. And there's so much graveyard hate in this format that... As soon as you hit games two and three, you're Lelish Norm. You're in a bit of trouble. Um, so yeah, I think this kind of deck is great in best of one. But yeah, it just struggles, I think, to... It just doesn't have a huge amount of game against the amount of graveyard hate. Now you could probably play, you know, you could play Terra Sunder or something different in the sideboard to maybe make that work instead, so you can get rid of their Ley Lines of the Void. The sideboard probably does need slightly different configuration with the Bloom Command. It's not necessarily the best against what Graveyard Hate looks like now. Um, so yeah, I think there's some other options there. But interesting nonetheless, and we did manage to sneak quite a good win against Gruel Vehicles. So yeah, this is the deck, Saltai Dredgeless Dredge. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you next time.